this portion of our service is dedicated to our daily bread. It's affectionately known to us here at CCC as ODB. If you would like to download their app, you can do so at odb.org. If you're here in the sanctuary and you would like a physical large print copy, raise your hands. One of our ushers will get one to you. It's a word to be used for your daily devotion. And expounding on today's ODB is our very own Brother Kirby. Praise God. <laughs> God bless you. We thank God. Today we're going to be reading from May 5th's ODBs titled Grace and Change. And it reads, the crime was shocking and the man who committed it was sentenced to life in prison. In the years that followed, the man in solitary confinement began a process of mental and spiritual healing. It led to repentance and a restored relationship with Jesus. These days, he's been allowed limited interactions with other inmates. And by God's grace, through his witness, some fellow prisoners have received Christ as Savior, finding forgiveness in him. Moses, though now recognized as a great man of faith, also committed a shocking crime. After he witnessed an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, he looked this way and that and killed the Egyptian. Despite this sin, God in his grace wasn't done with his imperfect servant. Later, he chose Moses to free his people from their oppression. In Romans 5.14, we read, Death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a commandment. But in the following verses, Paul states that God's grace makes it possible for us, regardless of our past sins, to be changed and made right with him. We might think that what we've done disqualifies us from knowing God's forgiveness and being used for his honor but because of his grace in Jesus, we could be changed and set free to help others be changed for eternity. The scripture reading that we're going to look at today is from Exodus chapter 2, and we'll read verses 11 through 15 in the King James Version. And it reads, And it came to pass on, in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And he looked this way. No, I just read that. And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedst the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in a land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. The end of God's word. As we reflect this morning, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever felt like you weren't worthy of God's grace and forgiveness? I don't know what the answer is for you, but I know I have. If you're a human being like me, maybe the thought, you know, maybe sometime in your life a thought crossed your mind that I don't deserve this. I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve your forgiveness. I don't deserve your grace. The Bible makes it very clear what we do deserve Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Psalm 103 is one of my favorite psalms, and it's, it beautifully puts it this way. He has not dealt with us after our sins, 
nor, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. So if you are like me and those thoughts have crossed your mind, the truth is we don't deserve these things because the Lord our God, he's holy. He's perfect. And what are we? We're imperfect sinners who were shaped in iniquity. We don't deserve it. That's the truth. You know, this past Friday, we had our weekly Bible study at my house, and we were studying and reflecting on John chapter 18, you know, where we see Jesus is arrested and brought to um, Caiaphas, the high priest, and then to Pilate. And Pilate asks him a few questions, then comes out, and in verse 38, he says, and I quote, I, I find in him no fault at all. I just remember how that made me uh, feel when we were going over that. That he said, after all that, I find in him no fault at all. But what about us when we're judged? There are faults in me. What about you? There are faults in you. But in Jesus, there was no fault found. Yet he suffered a humiliating and painful death and receive the reward that we should have received. When we look at the daily bread passage, we see that there was a fault in a man that was sentenced to life in prison. It doesn't say exactly what he did, but to receive a life sentence in prison is, is not a little crime. I'm sure he didn't steal gum from a candy store. But yet, through that, he can experience God's grace. There was a fault in him. But through that, he experienced God's grace. And through him, other inmates who society probably would turn their back to and say that they don't deserve life. They don't deserve a second chance. What they deserve is death. Yet these inmates, it said that they received Jesus and were forgiven of their sins. What about Moses that we just read about. Moses, who we now know as a man of faith, who God used mightily to redeem and save his people, there was found fault in Moses. The Bible says he killed an Egyptian and hid him. And you would think that that would disqualify him from being used of God, but instead God chose Moses to free his people from oppression. The thing that amazes me when I read about that is that when he, the, the, the other two were fighting and he tried to intercede, they said, who do you think you are? Who gave you the right to judge over us? Who do you think you are? Are you going to do to us like you did to the, other, to the Egyptian? And it says that he feared and he said, surely this thing is known. There's certain things even for us that we fear and we don't want it to be known. And that's why I can really say I'm grateful for God's grace because what Moses experienced is God's grace because that should have disqualified him, but yet God chose him. See, because of God's grace, what you've done doesn't make you who you are. Because our identity comes from Christ. People can look at you and give you a label because man looks at the outward, but God judges the heart. And not only that, he doesn't look at what you did, what you've been doing, and how many times you keep messing up. With God, it's not what you do that makes you who you are. You are who you are because of who he is. He's the one that determines who you are because he's the maker and creator of all. He gives an identity based on who he is. You can look at Moses and see a murderer, but God looked at him and sees a savior. Sounds like he sees the Jesus in Moses. You can look at David and see an adulterer, but God looked at him and seen a good shepherd. It sounds like he sees Jesus in David. The same way somebody can look at you and see a gossiper, but God could see an evangelist. Someone can look at you and see a fornicator, but God could see someone who's willing to lay down their life. 
That's why I'm grateful for God's grace. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's not by what we've done that we get our identity. It's because of who he is that we have our identity. There's something that is beautiful that I love about God. The Bible says in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form, was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon it. See, the beautiful thing is notice that the earth was a mess. It was nothing but chaos. Yet out of that, God created something beautiful. See, we're all a mess. Just like the earth in the beginning, we're without form and void and in darkness. We've all been there. But that seems to be where God gets the glory. The things that we do that we don't want to be known like Moses who in verse 14 as he says, Surely this thing is known. The things that we don't want to be known is where we come to experience. And not just here, we, we experience God's grace. And those things that we're struggling over and over that we're afraid to tell people about. That's what God chooses to use that as an opportunity for us to know that the Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. I'm so glad that in the kingdom of God, things are a little different because we don't deserve all he's done for us, but he deserves the glory. And God gets the glory from the mess that we've created. The same mess that you're in or have been in is in the same area that God exercises his grace and uses it to change you. So, if your answer to the question I asked earlier is yes, I felt like that before. I felt like I don't deserve God's grace and forgiveness. I want to remind you today that, thank God, it's not you who chooses what you get from God. He's the one that chooses what you get. Because sometimes I know that, I don't know about you, but sometimes we could be a little hard on ourselves. We would look at ourselves and say, you know what? I do deserve death, God. You know what? I do deserve this, this life of pain. I do deserve this. But yet he looks at you and says, no. Here's what I think about that. Here's what I choose. It's not us who chooses, and I'm thankful for that. See, God loved you first, and that's why you love him. He chose you first, and that's why you chose him. He gave us the gift of his grace, meaning that we don't get what we deserve, meaning that we get what we don't deserve. So it's possible to become more than what you are today because of God's grace. If it wasn't for his grace, we couldn't have this life that we have. If it wasn't for his grace, there's a position that we might be in that we don't deserve, but yet we are there. If it wasn't for his grace, there are things that we're doing now that people can look at and glorify God. But if it wasn't for his grace, that wouldn't even be. If it wasn't for his grace, what we would be is what Satan would want to testify about us. But instead, we get to live out God's testimony about who we are. So today, I want you to reflect on and just give God thanks for his grace. And I'll leave you with this. Just as God has been kind and merciful to us, I want you to think, who is it in your life that you could be merciful to? Who is it that you could extend grace to? Maybe they don't deserve your forgiveness. Maybe they don't deserve your love. But remember that we are who we are by the grace of God, and we are who we are because of who he is, and he's merciful. So while you're reflecting on and thanking God for his grace today, I ask that you pray that he will make you more like him. And that you too can give love to somebody who doesn't deserve it. And forgive that person that you think, no, they don't deserve to be forgiven. And I'm going to just read that last part of the ODB again. It says, we might think that what we've done disqualifies us from knowing God's forgiveness and being used for his honor. But because of his grace in Jesus, 
we could be changed and set free to help others and be changed for eternity. And so, with all that being said, God's grace is what I really want us to reflect on today. There's so many different facets to God. But one of my favorite things I always think about is, I always tell him, Lord, I'm so grateful that you are merciful and that you are gracious. You extend your grace because I know I need it. I know I need it. And there is fault in me. There's fault in you. But in Jesus, there was found no fault in him. Yet he was willing to receive our reward so that we can get something better. And I'll leave you with that today. May grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.